Hello, and welcome to this joint webinar between 10 Genomics and Integrated DNA Technologies. Today's topic, Streamlining Single Cell Studies with Targeted Gene Expression. My name is Jordan Young, and I'll be serving as a moderator for today's presentation. The presentation will be given by Dr. Dina Fanan from 10 Genomics and Simon Dunbar from IDT. Dina is a single cell product manager at 10X, and she has a PhD in biochemistry from Stanford University where she studied molecular motor proteins and their role in embryonic development. Prior to joining 10X, she worked in the field of protein engineering and antibody stability and gradually made her way to product management. Simon is a member of IDT's NGS group, providing support to researchers using IDT's range of NGS solutions in the field. Simon completed his bachelor's degree in biomedical sciences with honors at University of Ulster. He then pursued postgraduate studies at Queen's University in Belfast where he earned a master's degree in molecular biology. Prior to working at IDT, Simon investigated the therapeutic potential of siRNA for treatment of conditions caused by dominant negative mutations. Their presentation should last about 35 minutes, and upon completion, I'll lead a Q&A session where the speakers will address as many questions from attendees as possible. As attendees, you have been muted, but we encourage you to ask questions or make comments at any time during or after the presentation by entering your questions in the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen. Also, please note that you can expand the presentation slide window for easier viewing. In case you need to leave early or want to revisit this webinar, we are recording the presentation. And we'll make a link to the recording available on our website a few days after the presentation. We will also post the recording presentation on our YouTube and Vimeo channels. You will receive links to these in a follow-up email. Thank you, Jordan, for the introduction. Um, so my name is Dina, and today I'm going to talk about single cell methods that allow you to get gene expression data from thousands of individual cells to help answer questions about heterogeneous samples and complex diseases at high resolution. As researchers scale experiments or move to validation phases of their projects, this process allows them to focus on the most relevant pathways and genes and reduce their sequencing burden by up to 90%. Targeted gene expression from 10X Genomics enables the design of fully custom gene panels to help researchers gain deeper molecular insights while maintaining high sensitivity and reproducibility. So I'd like to start by just highlighting our single cell product portfolio in case you're not aware of it. So our suite of single cell tools has played a critical role in enabling scientists across the world to resolve the complexities of biology in fields such as oncology, immunology, neuroscience, and many more research areas. These tools include not only solutions for gene expression, but also immune profiling and attack seek, which provides profiles of open and accessible regions of chromatin uh, at single cell resolution. And we're very proud that our Chromium platform has been highlighted by both Nature Methods in their Methods of the Year in 2018 and 2019, and the scientists' top 10 innovations in every one of the last four years. We're also extremely proud that 10X customers have done so much phenomenal science leveraging these products, which is evidenced by the more than 2,000 publications to date, many of which are very impactful and in high-profile journals. And that doesn't even include you know, clinical and translational research happening at biotech and pharma companies across the world. And at 10X Genomics, we're really passionate about building the next generation of technology and tools for our customers. And there's really three core components of what we're working to deliver. So the first one here is scale, really to be able to accelerate our understanding of fundamental biology as well as disease you need to be able to run the right number of samples and time points and conditions. Um, and you know, in the time that we've been living through in the past year or so, I think it's more apparent than ever just how important it is to do that. And secondly, we think about enabling scientists with the tools they need to do their work so that single cell analysis can be applied in more labs to tackle the most challenging questions as a scientific community. And finally, just to resolve the immense complexity of biology, you need the statistical power that you can only gain by profiling single cells and their individual phenotypes. 
So this is our single cell gene expression workflow, which has a carefully integrated instrument, consumables and reagent that take you from a single cell suspension on the left all the way to a sequencing ready library. And on the other end of that sequencer, our analysis and visualization pipelines take you from the sequencing files to data that helps you get biological insights into your sample. And this enables you to get sensitive gene expression data from hundreds to tens of thousands of single cells. And you can also add on simultaneous multiomic readouts with what we call our feature barcode technology. So for example, you can combine this single cell three prime gene expression with cell surface protein expression, or you can assess the effects of CRISPR perturbations at single cell resolution. And then similarly, with our single cell immune profiling product, we have the same general workflow going from a single cell suspension to the sequencing ready library. But in this case, in addition to combining the five prime gene expression with something like cell surface protein expression, you can also simultaneously enrich for and sequence T cell receptors and B cell immunoglobulins and you can even pair alpha and beta chain TCR sequences from individual T cells or pair heavy and light chain Ig sequences from individual B cells with full isotype resolution. So our gene expression platforms that focus on unbiased profiling of the whole transcriptome have really enabled our users to make huge strides in resolving the complexity of biology. And they've done things like identifying novel and rare cell types, profiling entire organs, and characterizing um, transcriptional states of populations of cells. And so now we're talking about a newer product that takes you from that novel target discovery to more focused gene expression. And so when we were designing this assay, there were a few important features that we wanted to be sure that we included. So the first one is increased experimental efficiency, meaning um, you know, decreasing the time to getting actionable results and streamlining your analysis. So especially if you're starting with a clear hypothesis, you know, the idea that you can move faster here. The next one is obviously reduced sequencing cost, and so that's shown on the graph on the right there. Um, as you know, experiments scale up, the cost of sequencing the whole transcriptome data can skyrocket. The number of um, reads per cell that you have to do, and, and of course the cost of sequencing those samples can go down dramatically um, if you use a targeted approach due to the higher number of on-target reads. So in the example that I'm showing here, if you're working with 8,000 cells, you know, you might do 20,000 reads per cell with a whole transcriptome assay to get what you need, which is a total of 160 million reads. With one of our targeted panels, you can cut that down to 4,000 or even 2,000 reads per cell, which is a big decrease in the sequencing. Um, the next one is um, really highlights that our targeted solution builds on top of our existing chemistries, which enables it to achieve the same high sensitivity that they provide. So we're using a hybrid capture enrichment approach, and I'll talk about that a little bit more soon, where the enrichments are actually performed on the existing gene expression libraries. And this is because we recognize that both of these methods have important applications. So early on in, in your research, you might want to take an unbiased approach to define your blueprints and decide which genes matter to you. When you're ready to scale up, you can then hone in on just those specific genes and move faster. And then this workflow is also compatible with the feature barcoding technology that I mentioned, which allows you to do both targeted gene expression and protein expression from the same single cells. So this approach really allows us to integrate the targeted assay into our existing products. Um, and then finally, we provide curated content in the form of pre-designed panels for human genes. And then the, the main topic of today's presentation is the ability to support customization through our custom panel designer. So really the ability to customize, you know, to focus on the genes that really matter to you. And so as I mentioned, you know, it's, it's an addendum to the existing 10x workflow where you start with your gene expression libraries from either single cells 
or tissue sections, which I'm not going to be talking about today, but if you're interested in learning more about the capabilities of our Visium spatial platform, please do reach out to us. So with the single cell libraries, you know, the optional feature barcoding here that includes things like antigen specificity or CRISPR perturbations or cell surface proteins. Um, and that final library is where the enrichment workflow begins. So there you can pull up to eight of those libraries into one single pull down reaction. And then you sequence those targeted samples. And then the um, 10x analysis and visualization software makes it easy to analyze that targeted data. And if you're working with human cells or human samples, we offer uh, pre-designed human panels with over a thousand genes each that represent four major research areas. So the human pan cancer, immunology, neuroscience, and gene signature. And these can actually be further customized by adding up to 200 additional genes on top. Um, or you can add exogenous sequences as well, like uh, reporter genes or viral transcripts, for example. And then you can also build fully custom panels using our intuitive custom panel designer web-based tool for either human or mouse genes. And that's what we'll be talking about more in this presentation. So to do the enrichment, we use biotinylated oligonucleotides that tile across the transcripts of interest to enrich the barcoded library by a hybrid capture method. And this you know, means that you always maintain that whole transcriptome library, so you can go back to it for any reason. But when you're enriching for a set of genes, you can then save up to 90% of your sequencing reads, and you can actually gain greater sensitivity for detecting the important genes. And you might wonder, why do we tile across the whole transcript? And the answer is that this full tiling allows us to gain the best sensitivity, uh, make sure that we capture you know, any transcript and we cover um, all of the different parts of that transcript, including transcriptional start sites and UTRs without having a priori knowledge of the sample that you're working with. Um, and that also means you can enrich from either a three prime or a five prime gene expression library with one single panel. So here's the URL at cloud.10xgenomics.com to get to our custom panel designer, which enables you to go in and create designs. So as I said, you can add up to 200 genes on top of one of our pre-designed human panels, or start from scratch and create a fully custom panel representing anywhere from 10 to 1500 human genes, as well as up to 10 exogenous sequences. And here I'm showing the workflow for how you would, you know, work with these custom panels. And this slide looks a little bit busy, but it's actually very straightforward. So you simply go into the custom panel designer and you just paste in your list of sequences or genes. And then it will output two files for you that are shown in green. So one of them can be directly uploaded to IDT, who's our compatible partner, uh, to, you know, order your panel that you've designed. The other file is used to tell the 10x analysis software how to process your targeted gene expression data. And importantly, I just want to mention that we have really helpful resources on our support website where you can get guidance in you know, designing a custom panel. So if you're wondering, have I included enough genes to be able to see what I need to see? Or is there a way I can model what my panel would look like on an existing data set before I commit to ordering it? Um, or even how deeply do I need to sequence my targeted libraries? So you can get answer to those questions and more um, on our support website. And now I'll move on to showcasing some of the data that we've generated using our targeted gene expression solution with mouse libraries that we've enriched with fully custom panels synthesized by IDT. So in this slide, you can see that we observed excellent performance of mouse fully custom panels across a really large range of panel sizes and sample types. So in these plots that I'm showing, every data point is a targeted library. And on the y-axis, the fraction of reads in the targeted gene expression library that map to genes included in the panel, which I'll refer to as the fraction of reads on target for three prime gene expression on the left 
and 5 prime gene expression on the right. And then on the x-axis, we're grouping targeted libraries by the custom panel that was used for the enrichment. So as I mentioned, we tested a range of panel sizes, with the largest one, about um, 1,000 genes targeted, down to 50 genes on the small end. And in addition to a range of panel sizes, we also tested a pretty good range of mouse sample types, including uh, PBMCs, embryonic brain nuclei, splenocytes, and cell lines. And so this data shows that, you know, basically regardless of the panel size and the sample type, we really observed excellent performance in the targeted assay with greater than 80% of reads on target in the three prime libraries prepared from cells, and then greater than about 70% on target for three prime libraries prepared from nuclei and five prime libraries prepared from cells. And these metrics are very similar to what we previously observed when testing um, custom panels on human samples as well, which indicates you know, comparable human and mouse assay performance. And then I just want to note that when you're analyzing data from panels with very low expression, it's perfectly expected to observe more variability in the fraction of reads on target. However, even for these samples, the fold enrichment that we're getting is excellent. So, you know, for example, a whole transcriptome library that might have only something like 0.006% of reads corresponding to genes included in the panel, and now the targeted library shows, you know, 33% of reads on target. That 33% might sound low, but it's actually, you know, a 5,600 fold enrichment for targeted genes, which really indicates excellent assay performance. And to further illustrate the dynamic range of our targeted gene expression assay, here we're showing reads on target for both the targeted and whole transcriptome three prime libraries, and these are on that y and x axis respectively. And the data really nicely shows that targeting specificity was not affected by the expression level of the target genes in these whole transcriptome libraries. We also observe that um, even at panel expression levels in the whole transcriptome libraries at or even below 0.1 percent, targeting specificity was not compromised. Um, but we, you know, we do see and expect some degree of variability here. Uh, in addition to evaluating targeting specificity, we also evaluated the recovery of targeted genes relative to their abundance in the underlying parent whole transcriptome libraries. So here we're focusing on an example um, publicly available data set, which is uh, a five prime mouse plenocyte library. And this is a data set of about a thousand cells that were enriched for 300 immune related genes. So on the left, we're showing a correlation plot where every data point is a gene that was targeted. So on the y-axis is the number of UMIs obtained in the targeted library. And on the x-axis, the number of UMIs obtained in the parent library. And these are all calculated at a computationally downsampled read depth. So this data shows that the UMI recovery was highly efficient and very uniform. So across the genes spanning, you know, five logs of gene expression, it's, it's very uniform. And on the right, we show a histogram of per gene UMI recovery ratios. So on the x-axis, we're showing the value of the ratio for every targeted gene from the targeted to the whole transcriptome library as a function of sequencing depth. And this data shows that when the parent library is sequenced at 20,000 reads per cell, which is our usual recommendation, only about 600 reads per cell on the targeted library are actually enough to obtain most of those targeted UMIs during the enrichment reaction. And then upon increasing that sequencing depth of the targeted library, so going up to you know, 1,200 reads per cell, we observed that the majority of targeted genes were actually recovered at a higher efficiency. So you're really getting much more deep reads on those genes that you care about. One of the most important questions that we've asked ourselves is whether targeting can still lead you to biological insights 
And our answer is yes. So using that same thousand cell mouse plenocyte data set, we show here a series of UMAP projections for both the parent whole transcriptome and the targeted library. So on the top row of the slide, we're showing that for this 300 gene immune panel that we used, the cell clustering of the targeted library is very representative of the whole transcriptome. So we saw B cells, T cells, NK cells, macrophages, granulocytes, and even lymphoid progenitors. And all of this was seen at about sevenfold less uh, number of reads per cell, or fewer, sorry. On the bottom row, we show that uh, using our targeted expression, targeted gene expression solution, there's also a potential to increase your sensitivity uh, of detection for targeted genes. And I'll show a little bit more of that on the next slide. So here, our data shows that at 6,800 reads per cell for the targeted library, you can see a more robust expression of this one particular gene that we're showing as an example. This is MS4A1, which is a B cell marker. And compared to the whole transcriptome counterpart library, which was sequenced at 47,000 reads per cell. So we observed an increase in the fraction of cells expressing this B cell marker at a reasonable threshold, as well as just a stronger detection on a per cell basis. So you can see the percent and then the actual maximum number of reads. And so, you know, note that this targeting assay is designed to enhance detection of existing genes in the library. So it's not meant to detect genes that were not observed in the whole transcriptome library. Um, but if they were present, it can really enhance their detection, which can really allow for high resolution exploration of your biological data. Um, just a few months ago in December, 10X Genomics also released a product called 3' Cellplex, which is also compatible with targeted mouse gene expression libraries. And this product enables greater cell and sample throughput by multiplexing, which really reduces sample costs and allows you to scale to larger single cell experiments, which is a really great complement to targeted gene expression. So cell multiplexing allows you to uniquely tag either cells or nuclei samples, which can then be combined into one single gem generation reaction in those microfluidic chips. So from this particular sample, two distinct libraries are shown that are, that are generated. So there's the gene expression library and the cell multiplexing library. And then the gene expression library can just go right into the targeting workflow as before. Uh, so the three prime cellplex um, allows you to profile up to 30,000 cells per library which equals 240,000 cells from one run. And then our targeted gene expression solution allows you to pool up to eight of these three prime cellplex libraries into one enrichment reaction. So you can really enrich a total of 240,000 cells in one single pull down, which really you know, scales quite efficiently here. So at 10X, we generated a really interesting data set that's also available on our support website. In this particular experiment, our team isolated nuclei from four mouse um, E18 brain tissues, and then they tagged each nuclei set with three different cell multiplexing oligos, which we call CMOs. So then the tagged nuclei were all loaded into a single channel in our microfluidic chip for that gem generation and subsequent library preparation steps. Uh, we aim to capture about 25,000 nuclei from this experiment. So that whole transcriptome mouse library was then targeted using a custom neuroscience panel we designed with 100 genes and then sequenced. And the data was then analyzed using our Cell Ranger Multi pipeline. So our three prime cellplex mouse brain nuclei data showed very high targeting specificity and read enrichment. And shown here are some snapshots of the output from our web summary. So on the top left, we're showing a table of key targeting metrics for the entire three prime cellplex library, meaning all the multiplex samples put together. So the reads on target were above 70% while the non-targeted genes only accounted for less than 6% of the reads. 
out of 112 genes, to be specific, in the panel, um, 104 of them were detected, and all were significantly enriched relative to the non-targeted genes. That plot on the right shows the read enrichment for every targeted gene in blue versus the non-targeted genes in gray. And the x-axis shows the number of UMIs for every gene displayed, while the y-axis shows the number of reads assigned to each one of those genes. So the separation of those blue dots and the gray dots shows that large degree of enrichment that was obtained during this targeted experiment. And then if we focus on one of the four brain nuclei, which we can do after the demultiplexing step, we evaluated about 5,300 cells sequenced at almost 2,000 reads per cell. So with this 100 gene custom neuroscience panel, we were able to perform detailed cell type annotation of both the neuronal and non-neuronal populations, as shown on this UMAP projection on the left. So we could identify the major groups of excitatory and inhibitory neurons, as well as neuroblasts and vasculature cells such as parasites. And further, we were able to subdivide the inhibitory neuron cluster using the expression of GAD1 and GAD2 genes, shown as those violin plots on the right, into you know, bona fide inhibitory neurons and interneurons. So we annotated the latter ones based on the expression of that marker um, ADARB2, shown in the violin plot on the bottom right, as being exclusive to this one subpopulation. So these data just showcase you know, the utility of this targeted gene expression solution in doing really detailed biological characterization at a fraction of the sequencing cost. So imagine what could be next, you know, evaluating the effects of drug treatment on these interneurons over a time course across hundreds of thousands of cells. There's a lot you can do. Um, so we've been specifically highlighting the mouse compatibility for custom panels because that's the newest capability we've just added to our targeted solution. However, I just want to remind you that this is all compatible with human samples as well. So if you're working with human cells or tissues, you even have a benefit of being able to start with one of our comprehensive pre-designed panels that I mentioned earlier, and then add on a set of additional genes that you'd like to profile if need be. Or you can go from scratch and build your own panel the same way that we've been doing here for mouse in the experiments I've shown. And when we supplement our fixed panels with additional content, we see really great recovery regardless of the gene expression level of these genes. So here's um, the plot on the left is showing uh, the black dots represent genes that are present in the 10x human pan cancer panel. And then the light, blot, the light blue dots are uh, 10 randomly selected genes that have low expression levels. And the yellow dots are 10 genes randomly selected that have high expression levels. And so you can see that regardless of the expression level, the recovery is very well correlated with that of the parent whole transcriptome gene expression library. And then the same thing is true when we supplement our genes with um, our panels with hundreds of genes. So here we've added 200 genes on top of that same pan cancer panel. So these data confirm that the assay is flexible and robust when you're recovering customized content. And similarly, if you are only using the, the fully custom panel, not on top of the pan cancer pre-designed panel, you see the same even enrichment. And I mentioned this briefly, but in the interface for our custom panel designer, there's also an option to add exogenous sequences that are not human or mouse you know, reference genome uh, genes. So here we've added baits that we designed against three reporter genes expressed in a 293T cell line. So we added these YFP, RFP, and GFP supplemental baits to one of our uh, pre-designed panels and we compared the whole transcriptome library at 20,000 reads per cell to the targeted library at just 3,000 reads per cell. And you can see, again, very nice even uh, recovery of those exogenous sequences. And finally, I just want to direct you to that tutorial that I mentioned earlier on the 10x support website, where you can really get some helpful guidance in designing a custom panel. So this is a screenshot 
of just the introduction part of the tutorial that walks you through the example data set I showed of the mouse splenocyte sample that was targeted with that custom panel with about 300 immune-related genes. And so this tutorial guides you through you know, how you would take a list of genes and evaluate that design computationally using some built-in tools we have in our software and using existing public data sets, if you like. And importantly, it can also help you do things like calculate the sequencing depth that you should aim for for your targeted libraries and also give you some guidance for how to analyze your data. So just to summarize, our targeted solution allows you to achieve more efficient sequencing of single cell gene expression experiments with higher throughput and lower cost. And we've really optimized our bait design to maximize the coverage uniformity and really enhance the sensitivity of detection of targeted genes. So hopefully this will enable you to accelerate your research, um, you know, being able to customize your needs with your own panel of interest for either human or mouse samples. Um, and importantly, you'll always maintain that whole transcriptome library if you want to perform both discovery and targeted research. And finally, when you're generating targeted data sets, there are easy to use turnkey solutions for the software and the visualization of that data. So if you're interested in trying single cell analysis for the first time, or if you have any other questions about our workflow, please don't hesitate to contact us. We're here for you. Um, we have a team of really world-class level support that's available year-round, 24-7. Um, so please visit us at support.10xgenomics.com for more information on this targeted gene expression solution as well as our other products. And thank you so much for your attention. I'll now hand over to Simon Dunbar from IDT to talk about IDT's NGS enrichment offerings. Hi, my name is Simon and I am part of the NGS team at IDT. I'll be giving a short overview of NGS target enrichment using individually synthesized capture probes from IDT and the differences between the two types of capture probes made by IDT that are qualified by 10x genomics. At IDT, we have a growing number of tools, um, including library prep for Illumina sequencing, a proprietary amplicon sequencing technology, and our XGen hybridization enrichment probes. Our recent acquisition of Swift Bio will see the number of NGS tools available expand quite quickly. Uh, this short overview, however, will only focus on XGen hybridization enrichment options available at IDT. If you're interested in learning about these other products, you can always visit the IDT or Swift Bio web pages. XGen hybridization probes are 120 mer 5 prime biotin labeled DNA oligos that are individually synthesized using IDT's proprietary synthesis chemistry, and this does not involve any amplification steps. The high quality synthesis chemistry ensures even probes with a high GC and AT content are appropriately represented. XGen enrichment probes come in two formats, as NGS discovery pools or as lockdown probe pools. Lockdown probe pools and discovery pools are made on the same synthesis platform using the same reagents. The difference between the two probe products is the downstream handling after synthesis. Lockdown probes receive a higher level of QC. This includes ESI mass spec to look for a single species in the final product and two OD readings to determine a precise concentration before normalization and pulling. With the synthesis of discovery pools, the ESI mass spec and quantification steps are skipped. And discovery pools are normalized based on the expected yield and then pooled equimolar. With discovery pools, they have a very fast turnaround time because we have removed those QC steps. So we can synthesize up to 50,000 probes in around five business days. Lockdown probes with that additional QC um, do have a bit of a longer turnaround time. So you could expect a panel with say 5,000 probes to take five to seven business days. Um, and 50,000 probes in around three weeks. Lockdown probes are priced on a per probe basis and either 16 or 96 reactions, up to 1,000 probes. After there are 1,000 probes included in the design, they move to a tiered structure. Discovery 
pro discovery pools are, are also priced on a per probe basis in nine, 16 or 96 reactions, this time up to 15,000 probes in the design. And after 15,000 probes are in the design, it also moves to a tiered pricing structure. And we should also note that one IDT reaction does not equal one reaction in the 10X protocol. However, instructions are provided by 10X on how to handle the probes. We do have some additional services that we can add to our capture panel. So in-house, we have the capability to functionally test the performance of your capture panel with genomic DNA reference samples. This involves preparing libraries and performing a capture in-house to test the functional performance of the probes. Uh, during our analysis, if, if any low performing regions are identified, we rebalance the panel to improve those regions. GMP services are only available on lockdown probes. This additional service may be useful for, say, kit developers who need a bit more traceability with those reagents or those working in translational research towards laboratory developed tests. So the availability of GMP documentation can be a plus for customers running assays in a regulated environment. So when would you choose a discovery pool over, over a lockdown probe pool? Um, discovery pools are, are particularly useful in applications that are more cost sensitive and also require fast turnaround time and also that don't require the level of consistency offered by lockdown probes. So, for example, if you are still at a stage where you're deciding on what, what target regions to include in, in a panel design and, and maybe going through some design iterations, so during this panel prototyping phase, um, having your new design in a short amount of time at a low cost is often more important than having the best possible capture uniformity at that point in time. Lockdown probe pools are a better choice for those working on more sensitive applications, requiring a higher level of QC and where reproducibility over time is important. All of IDT's stock capture panels, such as our Exome, are made using um, lockdown probe pools. There's a lot of information on this slide, so um, you don't need to worry about memorizing it. This table, you can refer back to it for the differences. These slides will be made available after the presentation. We wanted to compare the differences in coverage between lockdown probes and discovery pools. So to do that, we um, constructed some libraries internally using IDT XGen Prism Library Prep with a genomic DNA reference sample. Uh, the samples were then captured with a small 75 KB capture panel that was manufactured as either lockdown probe pool or as a discovery pool. And both of those panels followed the exact same enrichment protocol. There are no differences in protocol between the discovery pools or lockdown probe pools. Um, on the Y axis here, we're showing the percentage of target bases covered and on the X axis is normalized coverage. So using normalized coverage will allow us to draw a direct comparison between lockdown probes and discovery pools. So here we can see the dark blue line uh, representing the discovery pool data and the gray line is representing XGen lockdown probe pools. The gray line in this data is barely visible. The two lines pretty much lay over the top of each other. So this is indicating that there is very little difference in performance between lockdown probes and discovery pools. When we look a little closer, we can see that there are small but noticeable differences in performance. On the left, we can see that lockdown probes have fewer dropouts and slightly better coverage than discovery pools. We also see that lockdown probes show slightly more even coverage than discovery pools. These differences can be in performance can be attributed to the difference in quality control. So because ESI, mass spec quality control and quantification steps are skipped on the discovery pools, while it is rare, we cannot rule out that a probe may be missing in the panel or that some probes are present at slightly different concentrations. However, the, the benefit of removing these steps is that it allows us to rapidly deliver discovery pools at a much lower cost in, in, in a very short turnaround time. IDT XGen enrichment probes are compatible with a range of targeted sequencing applications. Uh, we're proud to partner with 10X to offer custom capture panels for single cell sequencing. 
If you're interested in any of the applications here, you can reach out to us and we would be happy to help in any way we can. We do have an in-house design team for custom capture panels that is on hand to assist you with custom panel design. Um, however, for, for 10x applications, you should, of course, use the, the 10x bait designer. Uh, to, to quickly summarize what I've just shown today, um, the IDT XGen hybridization enrichment probes are individually synthesized uh, pooled high fidelity single stranded DNA probes for targeted next gen sequencing. Lockdown probes have additional QC that discovery pools do not. Um, panels can be optimized, expanded, and combined with other panels. We have a really fast turnaround time for our custom panels. In some circumstances, we can ship panels um, with up to 50,000 probes in as little as five business days. Our products, both Discovery Pools and Lockdown Probes, are very competitively priced. IDT does offer optional functional testing on your panel. If you want to get a head start on your research and have us do some of that work for you, we are able to do that. And for applications that are not single cell sequencing, we are always, of course, able to assist with design of your, your, your enrichment panels. Thank you for taking the time to attend this webinar. Um, I hope you learned about the differences between lockdown probes and discovery pools and good luck with your research. Thank you, Dina and Simon, for that informative presentation. For our audience, if you have a question and have not done so already, please type it into the Q&A box at this time. Now there are a few questions for you, Dean and Simon, in queue already. So here's the first one. Can you use targeted gene expression to study low expressed viral transcripts in human cells? Uh, yeah, thanks for the question. So yes, you can. Um, as long as they're polyadenylated, then the transcripts can usually be uh, targeted really well. And so I think I mentioned earlier that you can enter exogenous sequences. So those would be things that, you know, aren't in the human reference genome. So you can just paste those sequences into the custom panel designer and the it will design oligos just the way that it does for anything else. And you can proceed, you know, the same way as, as usual. So it actually is a great way to enrich, you know, transcripts that might be, you know, lowly expressed in certain tissues or cell types, um, just like you just like you asked in the question. So thanks. OK, second question. Is there a recommended number of genes I should include in a custom panel? Um, yeah, that's a good question. So the the panel designer enables you to add up to 200 uh, genes on top of one of our pre-designed panels, which are quite large. Um, but if you're doing a fully custom panel, you can go anywhere from just 10 to 1500 genes. So we, we've set the minimum to 10, but we actually recommend that the panel genes that you are targeting account for about 0.1% of the total reads. And that's just to get optimal performance, because we found that if you have you know, lower than that 0.1%, then the performance might be suboptimal because it'll be difficult to cluster your cells in a meaningful way. So, you know, you want to have enough genes that you can do that clustering. And so we um, we set that minimum. But like I said, that might not be depending on the sample type you're using and depending on the expression level of the genes, you might want to go a bit higher. And so we do have that tutorial that I mentioned that will allow you to, you know, kind of model what it would look like on a data set. And that can be very helpful for making sure that you're, you're getting the clustering that you want. Great. Thank you, Dina. Uh, Another question here, what types of samples are compatible with targeted gene expression? Um, yeah, so for human and mouse samples, it's uh, for, for single cell, it's compatible with both fresh and cryopreserved single cell suspensions. And then if you are working with tissue sections for our Visium workflow, then it's compatible with fresh frozen human tissue. And then I guess a follow-up to that would be, are the targeted assays compatible with other species? Um, not at this time. So uh, at this time, we are only supporting human and mouse and then some exogenous sequences like those, you know, reporter genes that I showed or the viral sequences. Um, however, you can actually work directly with IDT to design, um, you know, oligos against different species. It's just not something that we support in our designer. 
Another question we have here, are custom panels supported for use with spatial targeted gene expression assays? Yes, they are. So we support um, the use of our pre-designed human panels with add-ons of up to 200 on top. Um, we have not yet added support for a mouse. So, uh, so for now, with human fresh frozen tissues, it is compatible with our spatial uh, platform, yes. Great, thank you. Are there any differences in convenience, performance, or similar parameters for customers between 10x genomics panels, the semi and fully custom panels we offer? Um, no, so we use the same design principles for designing the baits against, you know, the custom panels that you would enter into our designer and the ones that we, we provide. The, the only difference is really convenience. So we've put a lot of work into curating, you know, the list of genes in our pre-designed panels, that, that content. We've tried to make sure that it covers, you know, a lot of what people are interested in. So it's really just to help you get started um, quicker or, or save you some time. But the performance of the actual, um, G, you know, enrichment should be the same. Great. Another question we have here is, how does single cell uh, expression complement with other NGS methods? Oh, um, well, it's a, it's a great complement to, you know, a lot of other methods. So if you are working right now in, in bulk targeted sequencing, for example, um, and you want to get that high resolution where you're looking at, you know, a single cell and, and making sure you're able to distinguish different cell types that are contributing um, or, or you're looking for, you know, different cell states, then it's, it's a really nice complement. You can form a hypothesis with, with bulk targeted, and then you can move into single cell to really validate that hypothesis. Um, it can also complement really nicely with things like, you know, DNA sequencing, if you're looking for mutations uh, in you know, cancer biology, and then you want to really look at gene signatures, uh, looking at expression of, of certain transcripts. So it's a really nice complement to a lot of existing methods, I would say. Great, and Dina, I think this one is um, segueing into more of an understanding of the compatible partners uh, provided by 10X Genomics. So the question here is, what are the benefits of being a compatible partner of 10X Genomics, and what does that mean for IDT solutions? Yeah, so uh, we have a, you know, a range of, of other uh, partners that we work with, and what it means is that we've validated those specific products in our workflows. And you know we feel comfortable recommending them to our customers. So, for this IDT partnership, you know we have two specific products that fall under the the partnership. Um, and so those two products are things that we've tested extensively in our development. And so we you know cite them in our user guide and our demonstrated protocols. And so it just really gives you know gives our customers confidence that those products will will just drop in nicely to the workflow. Okay, that is all the time we have for questions. I want to thank all of you for attending today's presentation. I also would like to thank Dina and Simon for their informative presentation and Q&A session. And as a reminder, we will email you a link to the recording for this webinar as well as future webinars as they are scheduled. Uh, thank you again for attending. We wish you the best success in your research. Take care.